I'm Jeroen van Mij and welcome to my lecture series on computer and network security. In this last video on symmetric encryption, I will be talking about the different block cipher operation modes. And as you probably recall from my previous videos, is that in block ciphers, the plain text is split into fixed size blocks. That means if the plain text message you want to encrypt is bigger than the block size B, the text is split into fixed length blocks, all encrypted with the same key. However, encrypting multiple blocks with the same key reduces cryptographic security and may help an attacker to decrypt a message or even to derive this key. As a solution to this problem, NIST defined five modes of operation for block ciphers to reduce the effects of key reuse. These modes can be applied to any type of block cipher like DES or AES. Here you see a table which summarizes the five different modes. They are electronic code book mode or ECB, cipher block chaining, CBC, cipher feedback mode or CFB, output feedback mode, feedback mode or OFB, and counter mode or CTR. Throughout this video, I will explain all of them in more detail. And let's start with the simplest one, electronic codebook mode or ECB. Electronic codebook mode is basically the standard way of using a block cipher. In the sense that each block of plain text of size B is encrypted separately with the same key K. So you use your plain text block, your key K, and then encrypt it with your algorithm, which could be AES, for example, to obtain your cipher text block C. However, as I mentioned, the downside of this standard mode is that if two blocks, P1 and P2, are equal to one another, then the resulting ciphertext will also be exactly the same. This can be uh, used by attackers. Therefore, electronic codebook mode is only advised to be used for encrypting small messages that are smaller than the block size. For example, uh, if uh, two parties are already sharing a secret key and they want to exchange another secret key, they can use electronic codebook mode. Second mode, which is very popular, is called cipher block chaining or CBC. Cipher block chaining ensures that the same plain text block with the same key does not necessarily result in the same cipher text block. How does it work? Well, we use an initialization vector or a nonce, here referred to as IV, which can be randomly determined and shared between the sender and the receiver using, for example, electronic codebook mode. This IV is the same size as a plain text block and is combined with it with the first block of the message using exclusive OR operation. The result of this exclusive OR is then encrypted in the same way as before. For the second block, instead of using the initialization vector, we use the result of the first encryption, so cipher block 1, and XOR that with plain text block 2. This process continues in a chain, hence the name cipher block chaining. That means that a, uh, a cipher block CJ equals the encryption using key K of CJ minus 1 XOR PJ. As I said, the initialization vector must be known to the sender and the receiver and therefore can be shared using ECB encryption, as it's advised to be kept hidden from third parties. Here you see the decryption of cipher blockchain in mode. So it uh, works exactly in the inverse order. So you take your first cipher text block, which is then decrypted, and by combining it with the IV, with XOR operation, you again obtain the original plain text block P1. This can be easily derived. C1 is also used after decrypting C2 to obtain P2. This works because the XOR operation is inversible and it is the inverse of itself. Here at the bottom you see the proof of equivalence of the encryption and decryption algorithms for cipher block chaining. 
I leave it up to you as an exercise to validate this proof. The third mode is Cipher Feedback Mode, or CFP. The goal of Cipher Feedback Mode is to convert any block cipher into a stream cipher. As a consequence, it allows working with much smaller blocks of size S. For example, S could be 8 bits, allowing you to use a block, a block cipher to work on individual bytes just as a cipher, uh, as a stream cipher. How does it work? Well, instead of encrypting our plain text block, which is now no longer B bytes but S bytes, we encrypt an initialization vector of B bytes, where B is the block size. So we encrypt this with the key K, and our output is discarded except the first S bits. These S bits are XORed with our input, which is now only S bits large, for example, a single byte. And this is our first ciphertext block, which obviously will also be S bits. This ciphertext block is then chained back towards the encryption of the second block by combining it with the first B minus S blocks of the initialization vector. So again, we get B minus S plus S bits, which results in B bits. And these B bits are encrypted. The last B minus S bits are discarded. And then with XOR, it's combined with our second plain text block, which is also S bits, resulting in our second ciphertext block, repeating the process. So here you see mathematically how this I values, so the I values are the inputs for the encryption algorithm, and the C values, namely the ciphertext, are calculated. The decryption works in the inverse way. And uh, something important to note is that for decryption, we don't need the decryption algorithm, but we also use the encryption algorithm. So for example, when using AES, only an implementation of the encryption algorithm is needed, which is beneficial because if you recall from previous videos, the encryption algorithm of AES is more computationally efficient than the decryption algorithm due to the mix columns step. So um, this allows cipher feedback mode to be implemented more efficiently than, uh, for example, electronic codebook mode, especially the decryption. Output feedback mode is similar to cipher feedback mode, but instead operates on full blocks of size B, so it doesn't transform the uh, block cipher into a stream cipher. So it works very similarly. An initialization vector, here called a nonce, is first encrypted, and that result is XORed with our full-sized input block P1 to obtain ciphertext block C1. The output of the encryption algorithm is also used as input for encryption in the second step. As you can see, this entire part within the rectangular, within the rectangle, can be calculated in advance because it does not depend on our plain text block, only on our key and our nonce. That means that the encryption can be done more efficiently as this entire block can be pre-calculated. Only the XOR operation needs to be done at runtime. Also, for security reasons, this initialization vector or nonce should be unique for each execution. You could, for example, use a timestamp and then share it using um, electronic codebook mode with receiver. Also here, the decryption algorithm uses encryption, making it more efficient. I have a question related to these two uh, block cipher feedback modes, so cipher feedback mode and output feedback mode. Which of the two is more vulnerable to transmission bit errors in the ciphertext? Assume you are using a wireless network to transmit your ciphertext, such as a Wi-Fi network, and there are some uh, errors due to interference. 
which causes some bits to be erroneous, which of the two is more uh, vulnerable. Feel free to pause the video if you want to think about it before answering. And let's take a look at the answer. It's actually cipher feedback mode which is more vulnerable as each cipher block is also used as input to decrypt the next block. Errors therefore propagate to the decryption of all subsequent blocks. So if there's an error in one cipher block, it will propagate throughout the entire decryption of all subsequent blocks. And the final uh, block operation mode is the counter mode or CTR. It's actually quite simple to implement and therefore also very popular. So instead of a nonce, it uses a counter. This counter is initialized to a certain value. And for the encryption of each subsequent block, the counter is increased by one. So we start with a certain counter value. This counter value can be zero or can be a random value. This shared between the sender and the receiver. And then uh, it is encrypted, so the counter is uh, the size of a uh, block. It is encrypted with the key K, and then XOR with our plain text block B, which then results in our cipher text block. Again, an advantage is that this entire part can be pre calculated. Just if you know the initial counter and you know the value of K, you can pre calculate. All of the encryptions of all the counters because each counter depend on the depends on the previous one. Only the XOR operation needs to be performed at runtime. Decryption of the counter is very uh, straightforward and it actually also uses the encryption algorithm. So it encrypts the counter values just as during encryption and then it XORs the plain text with the counter. This works because the XOR operation is inversible and is the inverse of itself. So the encrypted value of the counter XORed with the plain text equals the ciphertext, while also the encrypted ver uh, version of the counter XORed with the ciphertext equals the plain text. And this allows us to perform encryption and decryption, both using our block cipher encryption algorithm. As mentioned before, this is more efficient. So as I said, first counter must be shared, the other counter values can be derived from the first one by just adding one to it, and decryption uses the encryption algorithm. And this brings us to the advantages of the counter mode, and um, there are several advantages. The first one is due to the fact that the counter mode um, does not need any chaining, it can be calculated in parallel, so the uh, different counter values can be encrypted in parallel, which Makes, uh, which uh, makes it more efficient to run on modern hard and software. Also, um, encryption only depends on the counter and the key, and therefore the encryption step can be done in advance. It also allows random access, as it's uh, next to the electronic codebook mode, the only one that does not have any chaining. So we can just access the I block without encrypting or decrypting the blocks before that. It has proven security, this is outside the scope of this video, but um, if a unique counter value is used for each block, for example by adding one to the counter for every subsequent block, this mode is at least as secure as the other modes. And additionally, it is very simple to use as it only requires the implementation of the encryption algorithm, which in many cases, like in AES, is more uh, efficient than the decryption algorithm. So that was it for the counter, uh, for the different uh, cipher block um, operational modes. And also this was the last uh, video on the lecture series on uh, symmetric encryption. Thank you for watching.